Hello, my name's Amanda Geithner. I'm Head of Collections and Exhibitions at the Sainsbury Centre for Visual Arts and I'm here to welcome you to Unearthed. We've brought together an astonishing range of prehistoric figurines, heads, bodies, torsos, whole figurines. They're from Romania, Albania, Macedonia, and from prehistoric German Japan. And they come together here for the very, very first time. So we can compare these objects from two completely different societies, very, very disparate communities, not connected in any way in prehistory, but who all of a sudden were making these very beautiful figures in enormous quantities. So we knew that we had what is probably the best collection of Japanese dogu from the Jomon period on public display outside Japan here in Norwich. And we just started thinking, wouldn't it be neat to be able to bring together these two traditions of prehistoric ceramic figures here in Norwich, where we specialise really in the arts and cultures from around the world. We have this wonderful centre here which really prioritises the juxtaposition of objects from different cultures, from different time periods, from the very ancient to the very contemporary, and see if we couldn't do something with those ideas. So I think that's probably where the idea for Unearthed first came about. Well, I think the question of meaning is a very difficult one when we talk about figurines or dogu, because they could have functioned in all kinds of ways. They could be votives, they could be goddesses, they could be toys, they could be portraits. But there's a really probably more interesting question that we can ask. And that is, if they were, let's say, a goddess or a votive, which are used in a religious ceremony, what is it about a small clay object which works? I mean, what, what makes it work? I mean, why is that, why they use that and not a picture or a two-dimensional drawing? Why? And it seems to me when you start asking those questions, the whole world of research opens up. And you begin to think in new ways of the fact that these are a material culture, these are objects. They were touching them, they were holding them, they were seeing them, they were playing with them. And in that process, they probably learned new ways of understanding who they were as individuals, what their body should look like, um, what other people should look like, what their friends should look like, what their group, their family, their village should look like. Personally, I believe that they are um, art representations that were not meant to reproduce realistically any image, but to function as story triggers in one way. There is a language involved in, in figurines. The only problem so far, we haven't been able to decode it. This is a very exciting exhibition because it asks a very basic question, which is why does humanity represent itself and how does humanity represent itself? And by bringing together the representations from two entirely different cultures, we're able to think about that process and understand ourselves a lot better from it. On the way down to the exhibition, people walk through the link. And in the link gallery, we've brought together contemporary material, both to give us an insight into the archaeological context in which many of these prehistoric figurines are unearthed, but also to look at the way in which today adults continue to play with, engage with, manipulate, control, share and enjoy small things and the making of small worlds. Some of the artworks we've got here are, are by artists that are directly responding to their interactions and their understandings of prehistoric figurines that they've experienced in museums and in collections. Other ones that we've got here are artists working not so much with the prehistoric figurines themselves but the whole world of miniaturisation. The animation came about because I was invited to make the film to do something that would bring the dogu figures to life a little bit and I was just trying to choose things that would be appropriate to what I know of the Jomon people and the culture so I know that they had used simple wind instruments, I know that they used drums. There's a little clip of wind chime in there which just seemed appropriate and a babbling brook in the background which is running water is quite essential obviously to all cultures and very important in the making of ceramic artefacts and the swirling patterns in the background are intended to reflect some of the rather beautiful designs on the Jomon pottery. In this uh, uh, sculpture called Bride, she's uh, decorated uh, with uh, a pattern very similar to uh, the embroidery and weaving patterns in Macedonian folk uh, treasure. In fact, it's the image of uh, the Great Mother. And in this sculpture, uh, like in all others, the fertility attributes are always uh, emphasized. I decided uh, a few years ago to make uh, 
one exhibition uh, just in Macedonia from Macedonians uh, sculptures uh, which are female sculptures so I made it uh, uh, six years ago the first uh, was uh, in Museum of Macedonia so-called uh, prehistoric Macedonian ladies as our visitors arrive at the exhibition they're given a small biscuit fired figurine um, a beautiful little individual entirely unique small figure made by artist Sue Morph. First made a mould and I thought, well, this is cheating a bit and it didn't work. So I thought, well, I can do it by hand. And then I realised I could do a hundred in a day without taking up too much time the rest of the time doing other things. So I realised I cracked it really because if I was desperate, I could do 500 in a week. And by March I'd done maybe two and a half thousand. So I knew I was halfway there and uh, I, I actually really enjoyed it. And of course, in the period in which these objects were made, these communities, these civilizations were in no way connected to one another. And yet, in their settled villages, they were making figurines in huge quantities. And what was exciting for us about this exhibition, working with our academic colleagues, was beginning to look at the way in which the archaeological record, the record of where and how these objects were found, tells us many things about the communities in which they were found and how they lived. あの、どう、どう思うんでいらっしゃいますか。ピアシがなくて、それからもう道具にはどういうふうに思うんですかえ、あの素晴らしいコレクションのようなご夫妻のコレクションの中ではやっぱりあの注目すべきものでしてね、日本にあってももうあの一級品の数々ああ、そうなんですか。まあ、あの中期後